All righty. Well, we welcome everyone. Day Spring Commission Bible Study. Today is 325. 2024. Imagine yesterday was 324, 24. At any rate, thank God we're able to come to you via technology, Zoom, as well as YouTube in the future for those of you that are watching us. We welcome all of you that have come to join us. And uh, by way of instruction, by way of preparation, let's go ahead. And first of all, we'll start out with prayer. And secondly, we want to go ahead and we want to be able to go ahead and uh, just remind ourselves of some things that we've already taught in order for us to be able to move forward. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you so much for your kindness towards us. Oh, thank you, precious Father. You know, you're the author of life. You give us life. You strengthen us. You know how to encourage us. You know how to help us so that we're able, Father, to not let go, but hold on. <laughs> I bless you today. I thank you today that as we continue our, our studies, not only on the imagination, but we're laying foundations as we're leading towards this imagination and the power of it in our lives. We thank you, precious Lord, for all good things that come from your good hand and for your precious Holy Spirit that you have given to us that we might be able to learn, to grow, and to move in the kingdom of God as kings and priests as you've ordained us to. So we bless you tonight, and we thank you, Father, as our ears are open to hear, eyes to see, minds to comprehend and understand what the Spirit of God is saying to us today. And we help, thank you for helping us to assimilate that into our lifestyle, that we might have the victory and the blessings that are ordained for us as we walk in the light, as you are in the light. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said amen and amen. All righty. You know, I was uh, watching Pastor um, Ray and his wife, and uh, they were on uh, on the uh, Saturday, day spring event and so uh i was just listening to them and i just thank god that they're continuing to bring forth the word they were talking out of matthew of the triumphant entry most of you know it is palm sunday in religious circles that's what it's called and uh you know as we as we as we as i was listening to them i was just reminded of some of the things that we had brought forth already concerning um this this uh dimension of of of, of the triumphant entry. I'm going to go there just for a minute because I want to just remind you of a couple of things. Um, you recall that we were talking about how that uh, we said, do you see what I see? If you remember that, just give me an amen. If you don't, give me a God help me and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm going to I'm going to share a little bit about about Matthew 21. So you want to keep there, your finger there, put put a uh, Put a little flag on there or something. If you have one of those little tails on your Bible, you can put it there, Matthew 21. But uh, for, for by way of introduction, again, let's go to John chapter 5. We said to you, our title has been, Do You See What I See? And we already talked to you, but just laying this down for our visitors. And John 5, verse 19. John 5, verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself. And I said to you that when we look at the Gospels, we're all we're we're in particular for us. Now, in general, people look at the Gospel, and and yes, there's a lot of things that you can learn from there, and we do. But remember that the Gospels for us is training us how to walk and operate as kings, as priests, as servants of God in the in in this world. And so what we're observing is the lifestyle of a kingdom kid, the lifestyle of the king of kings. We're looking at the lifestyle of Jesus and how he acted and reacted while he was here on the earth. It's imperative that you understand this, because if you don't understand this, then you're not going to be able to appreciate when you move in, in transition from the Gospels over to the epistles. And of course, we start out in the book of Acts and all that has to do with doctrine, doctrine uh, in order for us to grow in the Lord. And of course, the second thing that we also learn from it is we learn how kingdom culture operates in a church. Let me say that again. So you in the from the book of Acts to the book of Maps, you're learning about what doctrine and and corporate culture, how we should how we should uh, uh, operate as a family in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, and in the fellowship that you that you are part of. And so here we go. He says here. The, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do, that's what he does. For whatever things, soever he, the father, does, 
these also does the sun likewise. All right, we had laid this foundation. You can go back and watch the other videos. But I just wanted to re reiterate to you that we're dealing with what do you see what I see? Because what you see and what you hear are so important that if you don't learn how to guard your heart and guard your ears to hear correctly and protect your, yourself from hearing a bunch of junk and a bunch of garbage, and if you don't know how to deflect that, if you don't know how to filter that out, you're not going to be able to succeed in life because those things will overwhelm you and they will bring you down and you'll you'll come to a place where you eventually you're just going to um, uh, end up messed up. If I can put it any other way, that's just it. Why? Because we have to understand that this world is geared towards influencing our thought life in order for it for us to create our future. I've said this before that you create your future with your words. That's why the devil cannot create so that he he comes and he pokes at you and he gets you to receive a thought. And if you dwell on that, and we'll learn a little bit more, more about that later. But as you receive it and dwell on it, then guess what? You're going to say it. And if you say it, your words create your future. Words create. And so therefore you find that suddenly now you're engaged in something that you didn't want. But because you the enemy, you received the thoughts of the enemy, it came and began to start working on you. And suddenly now you're in a place where you're wondering, why God, why is this happening to me? Well, he, he's looking at you and said, I didn't do anything. I didn't do this to you. You did it to yourself. You know, there's a lot of people that go around and say, you know, the province of God and all this. You have to understand there is a sovereignty of God. But there is also in the Bible a, 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 a dimension where God allows us to be able to work within the context of his sovereignty and be able to do some things that perhaps others would say that's operating outside the, the, the sovereignty of God. But I'm going to tell you what, there's some things that God has said that he wants us to do. And if we don't do them, then he's not going to do them. He, 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 he's already done, you know, you should write this down somewhere. God has already done what he's going to do. He's not going to, he's not going to do anything else for you. He's already done it. Everything, everything that God purposed in order for you to have success in life, he's already done it. Diana, he's already done it. If you ask him for more patience, I, I you know, I think, I think he, he, he'd probably hit you, not hit you over the head, but you know how some parents are, what's wrong with you, boy? Yeah. What's wrong with you? I gave you all the patience you ever need. Yes or no? The Bible calls God the God of all patience. Right, Malen? Yes, Pastor. Yeah. God calls, God is called the God of all patience. He's also called the God of all comfort. So here the God of all patience abides within you. Yes or no? When you were born again, whose nature came and, and dwelt within you? The nature of God. Why? Because you are in Christ. Christ is in you. Do you have God's nature? Yes. Is God the God of all patience? Yes. So if you come to him and ask him for patience, guess what he's going to say to you, mate? What are you talking about? I can't give you any more patience. I gave you all the patience you're ever going to need, girl. What you? <laughs> okay. She might want to put her little, her little ghost face up on there like somebody else. Listen, he gave you all the patience you ever need. Why? Because he's the God of all patience. And because he's in you, he can't answer that prayer. He's already given you all the patience you need. What you need to do, Diane, what you need to do, Salvador, is you need to cultivate the patience. You got to work it, work it. You got to work it. Come on, you got to work it. You got to work this patience. You've got to develop this thing in your heart so that you become patience. You're not born patience, believe me. And you're not poor, you're not born, you're not born a giver. If you don't believe me, just watch a little kid when another kid comes into his toy room. Mine, mine, mine. Why? Because we're not born with that spirit. We're born with a fallen spirit. But when Christ comes into our lives, it should transform and change us. And now love should govern our lives. And we are willing to give because it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen, said the Baptist. Amen. Well, now look, look. Notice the lifestyle of Jesus. He says, you know, I don't do anything of myself. I don't just decide I want to do this. I want to do that. He says, I go and see what the father's doing. And then I go and do what he showed me he's, he's, he's about to do. He showed me he's going to heal the sick today. I'm going out and I'm going to heal the sick. But remember what I taught you even last week. That is the secret place. That is the place where the devil wants to keep you out of. Because it's the place of intimacy where you are going to be activated, strengthened, encouraged. Your strength will be renewed. You're going to be able to face whatever you're facing with a new with a new grit. You're going to be able to go, hey, come on, come on, come on. Try it again. Hello. And then you're going to be able to be strong enough to push out of your territory. Those things that have been coming against you and your family. You know, there's, you know. 
know, we're, I'm talking about someone right now, part of our family here, group here, that that, that right now they're facing some, some real challenges in their life. But I'm going to tell you what, what they have to do is stand strong and be able to know that the God that they serve is the God that can do the impossible. Amen. And that he's not looking for you to try to do it by all your tears. His <laughs> tears don't move God. You know the Bible says when Jesus went to the when Jesus went to the well tears don't move God but remember Jesus when he was at the at the at the tomb of Lazarus the Bible says and Jesus wept <laughs> he wasn't weeping because Lazarus was dead he already knew he was gonna wake get him up from the dead I said he already knew he was gonna resurrect him remember remember he said Lazarus is dead the disciples said oh it's I mean Lazarus is asleep oh it's good that he's resting you know you when you're sick you should get all the rest you can and then Jesus looked at him and said honey you know he says no he's dead he's dead now I'm going there because I'm going to bring some life to this situation when Jesus went to the tomb and he stands there and he weeps he wasn't weeping because Lazarus was dead he was weeping because of the unbelief he was facing behind him I mean, Mar Mar Martha comes and tells him, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. If you would have just showed up earlier, why'd you delay yourself two more days? You understand what I'm saying? And then the other one comes, Mary, and she's imitating what uh, Martha was saying and, and, and the same thing. And Jesus is feeling all this and he's weeping. He's not weeping for Lazarus. He's going to resurrect him. He's weeping for them. And then Jesus says, Father, I know that you always, always hear me. But for their sake, so that they may know that you sent me, huh? I'm declaring this thing. I'm asking you this thing, and I expect it to happen, and I thank you. And guess what? Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus came forth. You've got to understand, there's some things that God has put into your power and your authority. Did you hear me? There's some things in your life that need resurrection. There's some things in your life that need to die. But those things that need to be returned to you, say return. I heard three people. I say return. There's a lot of things the devil has stolen from you, and you need them returned to you. Yes or no? Some of you need the peace of God back into your life. Some of you need some resources back into your life. Some of you need this. Some of you need that. Come on, somebody. Return. God is wanting to see you have restoration in your life. That's part of the reason why Jesus came. Jesus came that he, he might restore. But, you know, there's some things that God will not restore to you. He gives you the authority to begin to start speaking them to be restored. If the devil comes against you and your family, you're going to have to tell the devil, you need to restore the peace in this house. I'm not putting up with my kid acting like this. I'm not putting up with this situation right here like this. No, no. I command restoration of my peace. I command restoration of my family. I command in the name of Jesus that you foul spirits cease and desist with your yak, 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 and all your pop, 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 pop. Shut up, devil. You've got to go from my house. You've got to go from my territory. I'm not going to put up with this garbage anymore. Why? Because I have authority now. You see, you need to understand, May, the devil's more scared of you than you are of him. See, he's more scared of you than you are of him. Because he understands that you no longer, once you were born again, you're not just some common little piddly uh, human being that he can kick around and do what he wants. You are now made in the image of God. You are restored back to your, to your original state as a son and a daughter of the most high God. You carry a weight of authority, not because you earned it, but because it was freely given to you and me. And we have a right to stand up and begin to start exercising our authority. And just like Jesus, when he went there and that demoniac with, the, with a 2,000 devils in him came down, the demons were scared. Why? Because he was about to kick out territory. He was about to get people out in Jesus. Jesus name amen Woo! thank you Jesus well praise the Lord I've got to tell somebody to stop bothering me I don't know why this why this thing came in here but sayonara sorry about that let's continue and so we find then that Jesus went and he took back territory the devil was afraid of a son of God he said what do we have to do with you and I'll tell you what, when you rise up and you begin to start operating in that authority and you begin to start realizing who you are and that you don't have to have the devil kicking you around in your house and in your relationships and in your family and in your finances, you begin to start taking authority. Bam! The devil's going to have to give way. He must give place because the authority is not your authority. It's the authority that's delegated to you. 
just like a policeman's authority is not his his is not his body, it's not his gun. It's the authority that's delegated to him by the state. It's the authority that's delegated to him by the government. So you have that same kind of authority. And so you need to understand there's some things that God's not going to do for you. You're going to have to do them yourself. You know, there's some areas in your flesh. There's some areas in your old lifestyle. There's some areas in your emotions. There's some areas in your life that God is not going to come and change. You change me, Lord. Forgive me. Help me, Lord. Change me. No, he's going to say, you change yourself. Hmm? I said, you change yourself. You stop that already. The only reason why it keeps coming up and you keep coming back and repenting about it is because you keep giving into it. And because you, you keep giving into it because you're weak. You keep giving into it because the spiritual strength that I afford you in the secret place, in the place of prayer, communion, in the place of crying, sighing, and dying, it's the place where you're going to get the level of authority, the strength that you need to resist the devil. Remember, resist the devil doesn't mean that you're gonna, he's gonna show up and you gotta wrestle with him. Resisting the devil is taking those thoughts, those those thoughts that are per, that are trying to 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 awaken an emotion in you, and then you respond to it. But instead, you're gonna resist the devil, cast down that thought, and say, "No, I don't give it a place in my life." When you're when you're watching junk or or, or television or whatever, and there's talking some garbage about this sickness and that sickness, you know what? You have you have the power to either let that stuff in or you have the power to reject it. And the only way you're going to do that is if you have a standard of truth. Every time I see some kind something about sickness, I say I rebuke that thing. I thank you, Lord. We're free from that. Oh, you know, you know the princess has has cancer. Well, you know what? Sorry. I can't do anything for her in the natural unless she sends me a ticket and invites me and my, my wife to go over there and visit her. And then I can go ahead and tell her about Jesus, lay hands on her, cast that thing out of her. But do you understand what I'm saying? But I do have authority. I do have a right to be able to come to the Father. Come on now. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Who's the Lord of the harvest, Diane? The Father. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his harvest field. You know that, Kate? Kate? The princess there, she, hey, listen, she's a part of the harvest. She's a part of the harvest. Now, I can't go there, but do you do you believe that God has somebody in that palace that's got guts enough to stand up and say, you know, whether they fire me or not, I'm going to talk to, to the princess and I'm going to tell her Jesus is the answer. You need to come to him. You need to give your heart to him. Stop stop thinking that just because you, 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 you go to the Westminster and you're a member there that you're saved. You need Jesus. He's the cancer killer. And, you know, the greatest thing that you have is the ability to believe God, to use you to go ahead and lay hands on somebody and grant a miracle of healing. And listen, it's more than all the sermons you can give them and all the fire insurance you can try to sell them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? One miracle can just turn their hearts around because it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance because they know they didn't deserve it. I said they know they didn't deserve it. And yet God came along and he was willing to show them kindness on your behalf because you were willing to take a step of faith and overcome your fear and just open your mouth and release that thing. Hmm. No, Jesus understood what he was doing in this earth. What he was doing was he was showing us how the kingdom kids operate. And one of the ways they operate is they need to come into a place of intimacy with the father. Because it's the Father's will that we want to do. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will. Whose will? Father, thy will be done. Whose will? The Father's will. Now let's move on because I want to show you some things here. All righty. So the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father doing. So if Jesus operated in this earth as a human being with just three things, write them down. What were the three things I taught you before? Jesus did not come down here with angels and halos and all the power. He came down here stripped of all of that. And the only three things he had to operate in the earth to be successful were the word of God, number one, 
Come on, the word. Number two, the spirit of God. That's why he declared the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let me ask you, do you have the word of God available to you? Yeah. Do you have the spirit of God dwelling in you? I see a hesitant yes, but yes, yes, yes. You got to be awakened to the reality. You, Holy Spirit, please come. He's already in you. The day you were born again, he took up residence inside of you. Don't you remember when Jesus rose from the dead? What's the first thing he did to the disciples? Receive the holy salvation? No. Receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the active agent to bring about salvation. He's the one that activates the born again experience. He activates it. So Jesus comes along, Rose, and he goes, receive the Holy Spirit. And suddenly now they are just like us. The moment they received it, they're born again. The Spirit of God dwells within them. And now they're, they're part of the family of God. And they're part of the kingdom of God. So now, where's the Holy Spirit? He's in you. So Jesus had what? He had the word of God. That's why from a young age, the Bible says, Jesus grew in wisdom and Jesus grew in stature and Jesus grew in, in favor with God and man. That's in the book of Luke. And so we find then he had the spirit of God. What did he say? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. He goes into the water, gets baptized. Holy Spirit comes upon him. Yes or no? But how many know the Holy Spirit came upon him? It didn't go in him. Uh-oh. I thought, I thought my land would turn her head and look now because I just said something that, hmm, what? That's right. May the Spirit of God came upon him, not in him. Because if you read your Bible, it says Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? But in the baptism, he got the Spirit empowerment upon. And now the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do the work of the ministry. Say amen, somebody. Now, you'll find that over there in Isaiah. Remember, in Isaiah, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. See this? Is that 60, 61? 61. Yeah. 61, Isaiah. Where he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the Spirit of 61. Go read. See this? Thank you. My wife is trying to contradict what I'm saying here, but it says it over there in 60 or 61. It's First of all, it says, arise, shine, for thy light has come. Amen? Thank you, dear. Number two. The second, one, the second one says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. 61, isn't it? Thank you. That's serious, got to get serious. Hallelujah. All right. It's Isaiah 61. And so that's the book that Jesus opened up and read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. For what? For service. He anoints you. He empowers you. He comes upon you. Remember I taught you there's the anointing within and the anointing upon. The anointing within when you were born again. The anointing upon when you qualify and are ready to go and do the work of the ministry. Amen. How many know you don't go out and do anything for God unless you're anointed to do it? You better not do it or you'll get your baduski kicked. You don't know what baduski is? Ask Mike. All right. So let's go on. So here we are. Here we are that Jesus now says, I don't do anything except what I see the Father doing. So you and I, do we have the spirit within? Yes. So what did Jesus have? Number one, he had the word of God. Number two, he had the spirit of God. What's the third one? The last thing Jesus had that helped him to be a successful example of a Christian in the earth was obedience. Write it down. Those are the three. You ain't going to get anything else. I'm telling you. There's only three things Jesus had. If he operated with anything else in the earth, he could never, if he operated with kingdom power from, from, his, from his deity powers, he could never say to us, do what I do. Why? Because we, we would have to have access to that kind of deity power. But how many know that when you were born again, all that deity power that was in Christ is in the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is now within you, and you have that same deity power. You're not God, but you are a son of God. You're not the Savior, but you are a servant of the Savior. And the power of the Savior and the power of God is resident in his spirit. That's why he says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Zechariah 4, 6. By my spirit. Zechariah 4, 6. 
By my spirit, says the Lord, not by might nor by power, not by your wisdom or your intelligence, your strength or your connections. Everything that's done in the kingdom that has eternal value is by the spirit of the living God. And how many believe and know that the spirit of the living God has all the attributes of God? He has all the attributes. Now Sirius is right when she says Isaiah chapter 11. Because in Isaiah chapter 11, you see the seven spirit, the sevenfold spirit of God. Isaiah chapter 11, where he talks about the spirit of the Lord. Right. And then he says, and then he, he names six, two of each. The spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding. Counsel and might. Knowledge and the fear of the Lord. When you put those all together. Those are the dimensions of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Hmm. You know, there's two dimensions that are that are that, that reveal to us about God in the book of Revelation when it says, when it says of three dimensions, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. The psalmist said, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to hell, you're there. Hmm. Yeah, he's watching everything, he sees everything. Hell doesn't affect him. He sees everything. He sees that. He sees that. He sees that person right now, that couple right now at the no, no tell motel. He sees everything. He sees that person pilfering. He sees that person that's about to murder someone. He sees it all. He says, Where can I go to hide from you? I can't go anywhere because God is omnipresent. Number two, God is omnisense. Just put omni and then write the word science. Omnisense means that he's all. Knowing. This is the God that you serve and that dwells within you. He's all knowing. That's why he knows your tomorrows today. That's why he knows who's coming up on your back and he'll cover you. And he'll warn you. He's omniscient. He knows everything. Ask him. You have not because you ask not. But make sure your motives are right, James says. Because you, many times we ask for stuff just to have it to enjoy ourselves instead of having it and asking for it to be able to be a blessing to others. You know, if you got a promotion, girlfriend, it, 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 and God gave you a job somewhere else, it probably isn't because you're so special. It was because he loves you so much that he got you out of that environment before that environment messed you up. I'm talking to someone, she knows who it is. And you got you got another job somewhere else. And because you got a job somewhere else now, God delivered you for what's what was about to hit the fan where you were working at. You understand what I'm saying? God knows everything. And he knows how to deliver the righteous out of testings and trials. Say amen, somebody. And so here he comes and he goes and he, and, 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 and he delivers you. Now, omnipresent, omnisense, he knows everything, and omnipotent. He's omnipotent. That's why he's called the almighty God. Almighty God. Well, now, if you're dealing with the almighty God, I don't care if you call yourself the devil and you think you got power. You may have power, but you don't have all power. Aren't you glad you serve the God that has all power? Amen. That knows all things. Amen. That is everywhere, watching everything. Amen. That's why God is able to watch over your situation. He's able to turn it around for you. When he sees how the devil's coming in to try to take territory, he'll begin to warn you to go ahead and start setting up your parameters and begin to push out of your territory those things that the enemy is coming against you. And remember, many of, the, many of your battles, Diane, is right here. Right here. Eye gate, ear gate. If Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing, he's seeing things. But he's not seeing them with these eyes. He's seeing them with the eyes of the Spirit. You have spiritual eyes. You, you can see things spiritually. You have, you have spiritual antennas. You have ears that can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And if you'll learn to develop those, then you'll be, you'll be ahead of a lot of people that are, are going are gonna to be crying. What happened? How come God didn't warn me? How come? He was trying to warn you. You know, Rose, when you read Isaiah chapter 6 about, about how that it says, in the day that King Uzziah died, chapter 6, verse 1, in the day that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
Come on. And his glory filled the temple. Isn't that right? And there were angels there and they had six wings and they were crying, holy, holy, holy. And then the Bible says that, that, that he saw the glory of God. And he said, oh, man, I'm dead. And then the Bible says an angel took a coal, touched his lips and his sin was forgiven. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says, and then he heard the Lord say, who shall go for us? Whom shall we send? And he responded, here, my Lord, send me. You see, God was always speaking. And God is always speaking. Let me prove it to you. Out of the Gospels, you'll find that the Bible says that Jesus said, oh, responded to the devil. You remember the temptation? Turn this bread. Turn these rocks into bread. Remember that? And Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone. I'm thinking of my, of my son, Miguel. My spiritual son, he's not joining us because he's he's got some things going on right now uh, with his house and 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 uh, he doesn't even have the water on to take a shower. He has to go somewhere else to take a shower. He's got things that he's going through, and, but but you know what? It's because he's preparing his house to make it available for others to come and stay when they need to stay in the town. You know, that's a good, that's a giving heart. But anyway, I I I I think about Miguel and and I, I was thinking he had a vision about bread. I'll come back to the scripture in a minute. And he said to me yesterday, he said I had a dream. Oh yeah, he said yeah, and 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 the Lord gave me a big bang, a big loaf of bread, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, he said, what do you mean? What do you think that means? I said, I don't know, man. You know? And so I was thinking about that, dwelling on that. What does it mean, Lord? Huh? The bread, the bread, the bread. Well, I, I, I'll try, I'll try to, I'll try to pick that up later on and give you the what the Lord showed me. But I'm just I'm just telling you that he had this dream about this big piece of bread that he gave it to him. Huh? Uh, and, and 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 so Coming back to what he said, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by what? But by every word that proceeds. Now, it, now write the word proceeds down. Just write it down. You can always go back and underline it in your Bible. Not proceeded, not past tense, proceeds, present, present, future tense, present tense, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if Jesus said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by the words that are coming out of God's mouth, not that have come out, because if they came out, then God would, would not want to say anything anymore to us. But how many know the Spirit of God is still speaking to the church? Well, that means God is still speaking, because how many know the Spirit only speaks when he hears the Father say? So the Father's still speaking. That's why Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds Matthew 4, 4, out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4, out of the mouth of God. So there's, there's God is still talking. God is still saying. But you know what? A lot of people do not perceive. Why? Because of whatever, you know, it can be sin that, that keeps you from hearing. Did you hear what I said? It could be, it could be, it could be fear that's keeping you from hearing. It could be distractions and stress that keep you from hearing. But if you are kept from hearing, it's because you are not positioned correctly in the place you should be to be able to develop ability to hear the voice of God. That's why the first stage of hearing the voice of God is the word of God. Diane, it's the Bible. It's the word of God. Now, it's nice that you go to church on Sunday and you hear the preacher, but the preacher is not going to give you what, he, what you need to hear for that day, he's given you something that hopefully confirms what God has said to you in your daily reading. In other words, what God is saying to you. You know, somebody's reading Matthew. Others are reading John. Others are reading uh, Isaiah. But you know what? When we come into the house of the Lord, there should be confirmation of what God is saying to us. That's the that's the, the job of the pastor to speak to us. Things that pertain to where we're at and what we're going through right now. Amen. All right. Well, praise the Lord. So I think that we need to understand there are greater things that God wants to do with us. And he wants to reveal them to us by his spirit because God is always speaking. He's speaking right now. And if we want to be able to hear him, we must develop the hearing ear and the seeing eye. We must develop these things. I've said this before. I don't want to uh, harp on it over and over and over. And let's go on because I already gave you so many goodies before. And let me just give you this real quick. OK. All righty. Last week we ended, we ended with God possesses an imagination. I said to you that. And I said to you, God not only 
possess an imagination, but God wants to wants wants to build strongholds in your life. Say amen. I may know the devil wants to build strongholds in your life. That's why the Bible says, casting down those imaginations and those, those strongholds in your life and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The devil wants to build a stronghold in your life and keep you from advancing and believing that God can. Because I don't care what you're going through. We've all been through it. Can God? Yes, God can and God will. I used to have that on my phone. <laughs> if, I sent you, if I sent you a text, it would say God can and God will. I said, God can and God will. Do you know why I could write that down? Because I, I went through the process of seeing that God can, and I saw, I went through the process that God will. And so because of that, I know God can and God will. Amen? All we need to do is line up with how, how he has told us to operate in this earth so that we are able to experience that God can and that God will. I said to you, as, as we come into this Genesis 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, Genesis 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Other, other, other Bibles will, will, will put heavens. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And remember that when God creates anything, Diane, he creates it perfect. When you were born again, Malan, God recreated. He created you. Remember that the Bible says in Corinthians, if any, if any man or woman be in Christ, they are new creations. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I mean, you, you didn't exist. What, what you are now in Christ, you never existed before. But you are now. You are now a son of God, a daughter of God. You are made in his image and you are possessing his kingdom in your heart and his spirit in your life. And you're part of the family of God. Your name is written in the book of life. These are new things. And so here we find that God created you new when you were born again. You would never, the word there means something that has never existed before. Oh, you, you have the same body, Milan. Hello, you didn't go, you didn't turn forever 21. <laughs> Me either. I got born again. I didn't. I didn't automatically stay at 24 when I got born again, or whatever it was. I, I I'm still progressively, <laughs> gracefully aging. But what I'm saying is, was I a new creation? Were you a new creation? Yep. Inside of you, if we could look inside, we could see baby Milan. Jesus. Amen. Because when we're all born again, we are we are what babes. In Christ, we are babes in Christ, and the Bible says in Peter, uh, first Peter, I believe a second, first Peter says, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the evangelist, the prophet, no, the sincere milk of the word. Come on, how do babies grow? Milk, 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 milk. Hello. You get the milk, and the milk helps you to grow. But how many know, May, we don't stay on milk, do we? No. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I had, I, 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 I've developed enough, enough to be able to enjoy a nice steak. Amen? Even if it's a tube steak. Hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> Even if it's a tube steak. Thank God I don't have to stay on milk all the time. I went from milk to me. To meet, and it's the same thing with you and I. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he create them? Perfect. When he created you, a new, a new creation, you are created perfect. Yes or no? You see, here's the thing, May, is that you were born again perfect, sinless. Did you know that? Sinless. But why did you still have those bad thoughts? Why did you still have those attitudes that stink? I'm not saying you, May. I'm just saying, you know, somebody. But how, how come we still had that stuff? Yes or no? Come on. Come on. You know why? Because although our spirit was born again and is perfect and sinless, how many know that our soul, that's the part of us that was trained by what we see and what we hear, how many know is still contaminated with a lot of, a lot of garbage? I want, I want to see Nico, I want to see Jacob completely delivered and set free. But I can't see him set free until... He goes through the process of renewing his mind because as long as he says, I'm born again, that's wonderful. But if he's not going through the process of renewing his mind, taking in the word of God, 
walking out the word of God, living the word of God, practicing the word of God, then there will be no transformation or change in his soul. And he'll go back to the same garbage that got him into trouble before he was born again. And now he's born again, but he's in bondage. Did you hear what I said? He's born again, but now he's in bondage. That goes for any of us. If we, if we don't go through the process of changing our stinking thinking, Romans chapter 12, if we don't change our stinking thinking, we will continue to fall into the same traps because the thoughts that come provoke and evoke in our, in our emotions and in our mind, they begin to evoke those feelings again. Come on. I've been up, down, trying to get that feeling again. Barry Manilow, shut up. I said, you don't want to go up and down and try to get that feeling again. When those feelings try to come up, the devil will send a thought and try to evoke, arouse that feeling that, oh, yeah, I remember. Ooh, oh, come on, somebody. If you were a smoker and a toker and a midnight joker, you remember you remember what it smelled like. Ooh, that's Acapulco Gold. Ooh, that's Panama Red. Mm, yeah, a little more. huh? You, and then you pass by, you're born again. You have to renew your mind, and you get a little whiff of that, and the devil says, mm, you remember that? And suddenly you go, mm, mm. and instead of walking away, you start walking towards it. Hey, let me get some more of that. Let me get, hello? Who was talking to us recently? And they said, man, we have to move from where we were at because the people next door, man, they're just sucking on marijuana day and night and partying. And our kids were getting high off of, off of the, off, hello? <laughs> they're getting high off of the spumes that are coming out from the neighbor's yard. And they can't do anything about it because, you know, trouble will arrive. And so they have to move out of that place. All I'm saying to you is you need to understand that we are a spirit being born again. We're clean. We're free. We're alive. But we have our soul that needs to be dealt with. If not, we'll go back to doing those things because they provoke our emotions. And how many know that Colossians chapter 3 says, set your desires, your affections on things above. Not on things of this earth. Set your affections on things above where God does dwell and his glory will prevail. Come on, it prevails. You got to set your affection, your desires all up this way. And that means you're going to have to renew your mind and set your heart that you are going to pursue after God and you're going to obey him come hell or high water. Hello? See, because hell will come and test you to see if you really mean business. I'm dealing with, we're dealing with somebody right now. We're praying for them and we're believing God with them, but they're going through their time where the hell is testing them to see whether they really believe that their son can be set free and delivered. Come on, somebody. Whether they, whether God can provide and make a way and bring a breakthrough. God is able to do the impossible, but he, but remember this, you're going to have to go through those challenges to see whether you believe. God's not, listen, God knows the word works. Let's get serious here for a minute, Rose. God knows the word works. He doesn't allow testings and trials to see if his word works. He already knows it works. The testings and trials come to find out whether you believe it works. That's why they come. Now, if you stand your ground, remember James chapter one? Huh? Where it says, where it says about patience. James chapter one, where he says about patience, that let patience run its course in your life. It talks about testings and trials. And in James chapter one, it talks about testings and trials. And it says, look, when that, when that stuff comes against you, you're going to have to go ahead, stand your ground and see God's goodness. Let me go there real quick. Come on, H, Hebrews, I, what's after J, James, right there. Here's what it says. It says this. It says, I'm looking at verse 7, 8, I'm looking at verse 2, are you there? James chapter 1, verse 2, my brethren count it all what? Count it all joy. My brethren count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various testings and trials. 
What? I thought you're supposed to boo-hoo and start complaining about God, where are you? I thought you loved me. No. What do he say? Count it all joy when you fall into testings and trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is developing, working patience in your life. Oh, brother. But let patience run its course in your life. Don't give up midstream. Don't surrender to the test and the trial and say, basta naman. No. Let patience run its course in your life, that you may be entire and complete, lacking nothing. Did you hear me? You, you can come to a place where you don't lack anything because you've learned how to be patient. When lack comes around, you already know, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. It's not a question, Milan, if God is going to supply your need. It's a question of, are you willing to wait until it shows up? Because if God already ordained your financial breakthrough or anything else, answered prayer, then it's not up to him. It's up to you to wait patiently until it shows up. See, during the trial of Abraham on the mountain when he was going to sacrifice his son, when he went through, God stopped him and said, now I know that you, would, you will not withhold anything from me. Because Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son. And the Lord says, now I know you love me more than anything else. And then he hears a rustle in the back behind him, and there's a there's a ram stuck in the thickets, and, and, and it's stuck there, and God provided the substitute for the son so that he could fulfill the commandment to sacrifice. In other words, will God come through for you? Yes. Listen, God is already seated on the throne. He's not getting up for anybody. Did you ever read in the gospel in the in the book of Genesis? That after God created everything, the Bible says, and the Lord sat down because everything was completed. And he rested and he called the seventh day, the Sabbath, the rest of the Lord. Why? He ain't getting up to do nothing else. Lord, come and deliver me from this. He says, I already did. What are you talking about? Well, then come and do it. He says, I already did. I already did everything I'm going to do for you. Now it's up to you to go ahead and believe that what I said to you, what happened, will happen. I said to you, I will deliver the righteous. I said that if you call upon me, the righteous, my ear is open to the cry of the righteous. I said to you, I sent my word and delivered you and, and, and delivered you from all your troubles. I sent your word and healed you and, and delivered you from all your troubles. He is already done everything he's going to do for you. You've got to take the word of God, the promises of God, and you've got to start using them as a weapon. And you've got to start understanding you have a covenant with God. And if God said something that's, that, that pertains to your salvation, your deliverance, your breakthrough, then you're going to have to stand up and you're going to have to fight for that. You're going to have to stand up and wait patiently until the promise comes to pass because he gave you the promise and faith is the only thing that can bring that thing to pass because without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm just trying to tell you, you got to wake up and stop, stop believing all this garbage that, well, you know, if God wills, you know, God willed a long time ago and he shows you what his will is in the word. That's why you see him delivering over and over people that had financial problems, people that had family problems, people that had government problems, people that had all kinds of issues, sickness and disease. He delivers. Why? Because he waits for you to activate the promise by faith. So James says, let patience run its course because you're going to have testings and trials in your life. But count it all joy when, 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 when the stuff hits the fan. Because you, you know this. See, you're armed with a knowledge. You are armed with knowing this, that the testing of your faith is there to develop more patience in your life. But if you'll learn to develop patience in your life, you can come to a place that no matter what comes against you, you will wait patiently because you know the God that delivered you last time will deliver you again. And the God that delivered you then will deliver you again. And he'll deliver you again because you've learned to develop waiting on the Lord. That's the key to all this thing. It's not a question of God, ah, God. No, it's a question of Thank you, Father. Thank you. There's a promise in here that in the Bible that covers this. There's a promise in here that covers this situation. Now I stand on that covenant promise and I wait patiently for the manifestation. Amen? Amen. Mm. So we said to you, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And how did he create them? Perfect. 
James chapter 1, verse 16 through 18. I've got... Oh, it's, it was one hour exactly. All right. James chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good... Come, come on now, underline it. Go there. I'll wait for you. James chapter 1. Towards the end of the Bible, right after Hebrews. If you find Hebrews, next book is James. H-I-J. <laughs> Just remember, Hebrews and then J, James. Remember the alphabet. All right. James chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Do not err. Mm, that's an interesting word right there, isn't it? You know, when the Pharisees came to Jesus, he said, you do err. Now watch this, my lad. You know how you err? Not knowing the scriptures. What, Diane? Yeah, Jesus said that to the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You know why? Because they came around. They said, hey, there was a guy. And he, he married a wife. He died, and he had seven brothers. And each one of them married, you know, because they had to marry. If the brother died, you marry the wife. And they married, one of them married a the wife. He died. The next one married a wife. He died. I wonder if that was a black widow they were marrying. I'm just saying. They kept dying. And finally they said, well, you know, in the resurrection, whose wife is she going to be? Because she was married to seven of them. And Jesus said, now watch what Jesus said. It's not the story. It's what he said. You do err not knowing the scriptures. You see how many people are getting in trouble with God? They call themselves Christians, but they don't know the scriptures. Why do you think the devil fights you when it comes to reading your Bible? Because he doesn't want you to know the scriptures. You do err not knowing the scriptures. Huh? Now watch what he says here in James chapter 1 verse 16. You do err, my beloved. Do not err, my beloved. You know, do not err means, hey, don't, don't, don't go off on a tangent. Don't go off and, and be misled. Do not err, my beloved, my brethren. Every good gift, verse 17, every good, underline good, every good gift and every perfect, underline perfect, and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. There's only one Father of lights. The other one abides in darkness. Amen. All right. And, do, and comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. In other words, he doesn't vacillate. He is, he is unequivocal. He doesn't change for anybody. There is no variables nor shadow of turning. Verse 18, of his own will. Well, I'm saved. I'm born again because I got born again because I wanted, you know. Because, but it was what? Of his own will, he begat us. He gave birth, new birth to us huh? with the word of truth. I want you to hear this. I'm, I'm about to close, Rose. You got to hear this. Of his own will, he begat us. With what? With the word of truth. How does God create things? With his word. How do you create things in your life? With your words. That's why you've got to watch how you respond to negative situations. Stop saying the stupid things that bring come to pass because you opened your mouth and didn't use your teeth to bite your tongue like you should have. We are the product, not of our environment. We are the product of our mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart that is believing something, it speaks. And when you speak and say that thing, you are the product of your words. And it creates your future environment. Come on, say to yourself, I got to stop this. I got to stop this. Look, of his own will. See, your will is involved. I want you to see, see, this is how I read the Bible. Of his own, this is the amplified version. Of his own will begat, or this King James, begat he us with the word of truth. That we should, should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. Isn't that awesome of his creatures? How did he create us? How did he beget us? With his words. What kind of words? Words of truth. That's why you need to start speaking the truth over your situation, over your family, over your children, over your environment, over all that. Start speaking the truth because the truth creates. Come on now. The situation changes because you're speaking the truth. In the Amplified, it says this, verse 18, and it was of his own free will. 
I like that. That he gave us birth as sons by his word of truth so that we should be a kind of first fruits of his cre creatures, a sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. Did you hear that? That's the Amplified. Now listen to me. I want you to, I want you to focus on these words right here. So that we should be a kind of first fruits of his care of his creation or creatures. And then in parentheses, the Amplified says, adds this, a sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. If you want to understand that, Diane, then write these two scriptures down. Revelations 4, Revelations 4, verses 10 and 11, Revelation 4, 10 and 11, and Revelations 5. 11 and 12. Revelations 4, 10 and 11. I'm about to read. And Revelations 5, verses 11 and 12. The first one is, 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 the, uh, is King James. The second one is New King James. Revelations 4, 10. The four and 20 elders, 24 in other words, the four and 20 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne. And they worshiped him. And worshiped him. Not worshiped. And worship him that lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne. Verse 11. Saying, thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. Glory and honor. Glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. Verse 11. Has all things created. You have created all things. This is a song. Now look at the last part of this verse. And for thy pleasure. They are. And were. Created. Did you see what they said? Everything that was created. That includes you and me. We were created. For his pleasure. He finds pleasure in you, Milan. May he finds pleasure in you. He finds pleasure in you when you go ahead and shut your mouth instead of talking about it. He finds pleasure when you decide that you're going to bless instead of being stingy. He finds pleasure when you go out of your way to be a blessing to someone else. He finds pleasure when you open up your word, when you decide you're going to seek his face. He finds pleasure because it's for his pleasure that we were and we are created. Amen. He brought us into his kingdom because it's his pleasure to bring us in, to bring him pleasure. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. That sounds like Peter. By whose stripes we were healed. And Isaiah says, by whose stripes we are healed. So we are healed and we were healed. We are healed. Because we were healed. We were created for his pleasure. Verse Revelations 5, and I'm closing, verse 11 and 12. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels. Revelations 5, 11 and 12. Of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. In other words, myriad. If you know what the word myriad means, it means innumerable. And thousands of thousands. And here's what they were saying in verse 12 with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessings. That's the new King James. Now watch, watch the progression here. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power. Well, I thought he was the second person of the Trinity. Yes, he's the second. Doesn't he have all that? Yes. But remember, who's sitting on the throne? A God man. Not just the second person of the Trinity. It's now Jesus who is all God and all man. And as a God man who trans who tri triumphed, now is given unto him what? All power, all riches, all wisdom, and strength. What's the difference between power and strength? Power is, is, the, is the dynamite. Strength is, is the ability. Come on. Strength is the ability. If you don't have strength, how can you lift up 100 pounds?
So you've got to have strength. Power is the authority that you carry. He's received all authority. Jesus said when he rose from the dead and he commissioned the disciples, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. I now operate in both kingdoms. I can operate in this kingdom with my power because I gave my life for you. That's why we celebrated Palm Sunday. They, he came ready to lay down his life. And Sunday we, re, we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. All power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. That's what they said with a loud voice. And I'm here to tell you this today. Because you are in Christ, listen to this as you go to sleep tonight. Because you are in Christ, all this stuff that was just said is available to you. All power. Remember what Jesus said about the devil? He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And you know what else, boys? I give you power, authority over all the power and authority of the devil. I said he fears you more than you fear him. What else did he give you? Riches. Listen to me. I was listening to someone today, and they were mentioning. I'm trying to close, but somebody's drawing something from me here, so I'm going to give it to you. They were talking about riches, and he said this. He said, you know, when it comes to, to your provisions, when God created you and thought about you, not everybody else, he's thinking about you, and he planned you, and he purposed you, and he decided how he was going to form you in your mother's womb, do you know what happened? You know what happened? After he did all that, he made provision for everything you need in order to succeed. He says this, he said this, he said, when, when you were born again, all that stuff was activated in the earth. Your provisions, your blessings, your wealth, it's all, it's all in the earth. But you know what? Most of you don't have what you should have because somebody else has it. You see, the wealth and the blessings that God ordained for you, somebody else has it. You've got to take your authority and you've got to tell the devil it's time for you to let go of those things that have been held back from me because I'm ignorant no more. God ordained these provisions and these blessings for me. And now I'm coming here to say no more, Mr. Devil. You cannot have them anymore. You've got to restore to me. And while I was thinking about this and praying today, the Lord said, and you need to tell the devil, he needs to remind him, he needs to return it sevenfold. Seven, that's what the Bible says. If a thief gets caught, he must restore sevenfold. He said, the reason why some things haven't come to you is because somebody else is using them. Now you tell the devil to let them go and let go with what belongs to you and you command it to come to you now because it's time for increase and blessings and favor and great grace and it's time for you to be free from living in the mundane and the limited life. Now when it comes, you should be ready to handle what's coming so that you don't squander it on yourself, but rather you understand from the Lord what you're supposed to do with the blessings he gives you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Power, riches, wisdom. Christ has been made unto us all wisdom. Strength, he will strengthen you. If you wait on the Lord, he will you'll renew your strength. Will he honor you? I will honor them that honor me. What about the glory? He says, I will share my glory with no man. That's correct. But in Christ Jesus, God will exalt you in due season. He will honor you with every blessing. Isn't that what the Bible says? Read Psalm number one. Huh? Go ahead. And then finally, the blessing and blessing, blessing, blessing. Now there, what it means is this, is that people will speak well of you. They will bless your name instead of curse it because you're the, you showed like Job when the widow was in need, he ministered to her. When, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the, the young ladies were being, uh, were being lusted after, he stood up to protect them. When he, when he saw this, when he saw that, he stood up and he did all that. And guess what happened? Blessings kept coming and people started speaking well of him. Speaking, speaking of Job, oh man, oh Job, oh man, yeah, yeah that guy, hello. I think of Sitas, oh Sitas. I, I hear people say, oh Sitas, yeah, that's right. I'm not, I'm not lifting her up. I'm just telling you, when you people, some people say, Sitas, yeah, they know, they know she's a righteous woman. They know, 
Huh? She's a God-fearing woman. They know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and that's the thing with all of us. God wants to honor us before the people. So tonight, Father, we bless you and we thank you. And Lord, we're still moving forward, but we thank you for what we received tonight. Oh, we say thank you so much, Lord. And for thy pleasure, we are and were created, and we bless you and thank you for we were created, and we're still being created because you're still changing and transforming us into the better that we can be because we trust in you. So we bless you today, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you sit at the right hand of the Father. You're making intercession for us, and we just bless your people today as they prepare their hearts for Holy, Holy Week, Lord, in seeking your face, preparing themselves. Let them expect a visitation and a resurrection that flows into their lives, that, Lord, you're going to begin to start resurrecting dreams again. Come on, dreams, dreams again that were stolen, that were killed. You're going to resurrect things in their lives of breakthroughs, favor, and great grace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you.